You know how when you play a good worker placement game, you always wish you could play just one more round? Well, that has never been more true than the mobilization phase of Halls of Hegra. I'm Jay Allen Riker, horror author and solo board game fanatic, and this is my review of Halls of Hegra, which the publisher sent me a free review copy of. Halls of Hegra is a cross between a worker placement Euro game and a war game. I think the only argument that can be made for it not being a war game is that it plays too smoothly. The worker placement are literal workers doing literal things that provide realistic benefits. So that along with the theme, it doesn't have that abstract feel many worker placement games have. Every round, you recruit volunteers, building up your forces, then assigning them to actions like dangerous supply runs, digging the fort out of snow, repairing your facilities and equipment, reducing enemy forces, building up defenses, etc. There are a lot of choices. Eventually, the German troops start working their way up the mountain more and more insistently, and your workers will then have to man the defenses, giving them less opportunity to build anything up and repair the damage of the German attacks. Then you try to hold on for eight more rounds. So what are some things that people might not like about Halls of Hegra? In my mind, there's only one real thing, and that is that this game beats you down. But I can explain to you the varied ways in which it does so. You have a stack of cards for each phase of the game, but except possibly the weather, everything on those cards is negative. At the bottom of the card is the main bad thing that happens every round in that phase, how many doubt tokens get added to your um, bag uh, to pull volunteers from, which stops your ability to recruit, how many troops uh, attack you, how many airstrikes you face. I'm okay with all that stuff at the bottom of the card being negative, but if some of the effects of the actual body of the card had good things, it would have made I think things a little less grim, and I think it would have increased the anticipation of pulling a card um, rather than just more bracing for impact. Something else that's probably going to bother some people um, is that you will only win Halls of Hegra if you both play smart and get lucky. I played the game once on easy mode, but drew a doubt token each time right away when recruiting troops in the first phase, meaning I would only get one troop, one new recruit each time. And getting extra troops is probably the biggest advantage of the early rounds. So even though I played on easy mode, that bad luck eliminated all the benefits through no fault of my own. I would, you do have the opportunity to push your luck and I have been punished for trying to go for like a fourth recruit because it's early on and what are the chances that I'm going to draw that one or two doubt tokens and then had to put them all back except one. But in this case, it was on the first pull. In um, an earlier game, I rolled badly twice on the tower defense portion of the game, uh, suppressing the German attackers instead of removing them from the board. That meant that they piled up and they caused damage and overran me in a way that I'd never recovered from. As you start to do badly in Halls of Hegra, failure cascades. If you roll badly in defense like I did, they end up in the red zone. You end up drawing a low morale card with more bad things that happen to you. Uh, the defenders get hit and you draw even lo more low morale as they start to fill up the hospital and die. Um, low morale causes then also things like airstrikes, loss of supplies. Um, a lot of other things, and each one of them gives you less ability to repair the extra damage, causing more low morale, and you see how things go downhill very fast, and it might not be your fault at all. Now, this is something that wargamers will be accustomed to. This, that is part of the thrill. Um, you don't know what's going to happen. You can plan your absolute best, but this is war that we're talking about. 
I will say that though that this game is structured like a Euro worker placement game, and I have a feeling that this could drive some Euro gamers absolutely crazy. But like I said, honestly, that's just about the only thing in this game that is a negative. So let's talk about what people uh, will probably like a lot about Halls of Hegra. It is a big game that stores away small. Um, it's the size that I prefer, which is the size of the box is pretty normal, except that it's not deep, meaning that this can be like your fifth game in a Calyx cubby. Um, it has really nice components, a lot of fun wooden bits, and a really beautiful evocative board that somehow at the same time is so functional. Um, accepting the lack of a table of contents and an index, the rule book is great, covering a lot of material quickly, yet very clearly. There is a player aid on the back of the book, and um, it guides you as you go through phase by phase and station by station and has the page numbers for those sections. So along with like the visual aids on the board itself, something that you typically don't get with war games, um, it really, you can really just follow the flow on the board. Um, they're numbered. You literally go down the player aid and see what's next. And then once you get to the part where the workers execute their tasks, you just go station by station, um, one number at a time. Very fast flowing, except for the agonizing decisions, of course. So you can spend a good amount of time thinking about what you're gonna do, but you don't spend a lot of time figuring out how to run the game. I actually played most phases of Halls of Hegra because it, it is a multi-phase game. You start out building up resources and then things just get worse and worse as the uh, Germans close in and start attacking. And I played every phase without referring to a video except for the first. Uh, the first covers a lot, but still, this is very unusual for me. But there's a lot of good prompts on the board that made it um, easy to keep up with. Something that people will like about Halls of Hegra a lot um, is that there are so many strategies to try out. Every time you lose, which will happen a lot, you will think about what went wrong and how you can strategize to prepare for that next time. There are a lot of things that you can do on this board, and so many of them are viable focuses for doing well in the game. I would say winning, but winning is tough, but there are many viable paths. When I got blown to heck by airstrikes, I tried to add as many miss tokens to the airstrike bag as I could. I played a game where I saw how powerful supply runs could be because in the previous game, I'd run very short on supplies. And um, I didn't see how many supplies you really get when you go on a supply run. And so the next game, I increased my efforts in that area significantly. Now here's the thing, with so many things that need to be done, when you choose to focus on something, you neglect three other things. But it can also be fun to uh, discover new ways to lose as you're discovering what strategies might be the most effective. So there, I talk about how difficult Halls of Hegra is, but there is a very easy way to adjust the difficulty. Um, they give you a couple of tiles that overlay the bottom uh, track that tells you the round. It um, shifts that, it, you can use it to extend the mobilization phase where you aren't facing nearly as much pressure from the Germans and you can actually build up your strength and resources for those days. Well, you can place a tile and extend it by a couple of days. And then that reduces the number of days that you spend in the first attack phase when things you know start to go downhill. I'd say the first attack phase, things kind of are leveling out um, depending on your luck, you might go up, you might go down a little bit. After that, things start going steeply downhill. But the ease with which you can adjust the difficulty is so nice. It's so nice in a game that is, is difficult. 
to be able to play it more in keeping with your preference. If you like it harder, you can even reduce the number of mobilization days if you want. <laughs> so I mentioned that there are multiple phases where different things happen. Each one of those lasts two to three rounds. And these different phases, while they're very related, they give you a good amount of variety within the game itself, even you know, within the individual play of the game. And the transforming board makes that transition really fast and uncovers more information about the phase as you, it's got a modular little board where you flip it and then you remove it. And each time, besides revealing a new play area, you reveal little instruction and prompts on how to run that play area and how to run the like single occurrence things like the coup that happens on one day and retreat that happens on one day. And so you have variety, but it is an easy playing um, variety. A lot of games that offer a lot of a lot of variety, it it can be kind of it, it increases the difficulty of playing. And obviously, it, I mean, it's going to. If every round is not the same, then you have to, you know, get your head around what the new state uh, of things are. But this does it in one of the most elegant ways that I have seen. Something that I think that a lot of people will like who, who want a real thematic experience, but want that tight Euro gameplay is the way that the worker placement feels so realistic. It's not at all abstract. Like I really enjoy the game, The Magnificent, but I have very little idea of what the actual workers would be doing in most of these supposedly circus building actions. Here, it's so concrete and then everything is so interrelated. The way that it all balances out is very impressive. You have a lot of things to do, and the way they, they interlock makes you really have to consider every action carefully. Like I said, you can go into it with different strategies, but did you consider the ramifications of trying to get ahead within any one of these different paths? Like you can focus on digging everything out, but then if you want to get the best features out of a certain station that you dig out of the snow, you have to repair it. That means dedicating people to it, which means that you'll need to use your resources to dedicate people to digging out, which either means that you're neglecting, and pro probably no matter what means that you're neglecting, neglecting things like um, building up your defenses or reducing fear or doubt. And so you're gonna get punished for that. And it may mean that you are going on extra resource runs, extra supply runs. And that means that maybe, oh, it's too late. The Germans are on top of you. And now all you can do is man the guns. Should have planned better. So the, the way that the worker placement seems so um, realistic for a game where you're moving wooden tokens into different worker placement locations and everything ties together, it's just, it's so thematic. And it's so engaging because of that. So in conclusion, I think that Halls of Hegra is a truly brilliant game and I can fully understand now why its praises have been being sung ever since it released. I do think, however, that it is a game that can be polarizing. Does a game where you build things up to have them taken away a bit, at a bit or a lot at a time, leaving you like gripping by your fingernails at the end of the game sound thrilling and exciting and fun to you. It does for a lot of people. And if so, then this is like the Euro war game for you. I think it's just about perfectly balanced for this. Does the sound of that instead stress you out? And do you prefer a game where you build in strength alongside the enemy? Do you find growing weaker and weaker is demoralizing, not only when because you're drawing low morale cards, but actually in your heart, <laughs> you're getting demoralized.
then Halls of Hagar might not be the game for you. It does have the ability to very easily adjust the difficulty. And so watch some, watch some playthroughs and see what you think about it. Halls of Hegra, I, normally I wouldn't say that. For most games, I would, I would say if that idea stretches you out, then go on to a different game. But I don't even know what other game that I would suggest um, over Halls of Hegra if you're not a, a war gamer with that war gamer experience. And even in that case, it's certainly not going to be a one for one um, suggestion. I don't, I don't think there are many, if any, um, games like Halls of Hegra out there, especially with that solo only focus to make it just a really engaging, intense experience. I hope that this review helps you make up your mind about Halls of Hegra. If you have already played it, let us know what you think about it in the comments. I'm especially interested to know what Wargamers think of it, and also equally as uh, interested in what do people who actively like avoid war games think about this. Um, but that's all for today. Until next time, have a great rest of your day, and keep playing solo.